Howdy Tinker Nerds! So I've got this old, terrible HP Stream computer and I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. One idea I had was to take the touchpad out and see if I could repurpose it to do something else. So that is what we're going to figure out for this video. But before we get started, I've got some great news. Folks, I have seen the future and it's in this fascinating new medium called books and I'm jumping on board. If you've ever wanted more details or updates on some of my most popular projects on this channel, well you can now get it in my new book. Pre-orders have started and you can find a link to order the book in the video description. Trust me, it's gonna be a fantastic book for all you tinkerers out there and if you've ever wanted to support my channel, this is a great way to do it. The official release date is March 31st, so I think I should throw a party. Anyone interested in a Tinkered Up party? Okay, so touchpads. For all you Gen Zers out there, touchpads are what we used before touchscreens. Making its first commercial appearance in 1982 alongside computer keyboards, the touchpad allowed you to control your computer just by dragging your fingers across it. Then a decade later when laptops came along, these cool little flat surfaces were the top choice for sleek, minimalistic mouse control. I like touchpads now. Touchpads are cool. So let's rip this one out and see if we can use it for something else. The first step is figuring out how to get it out. And the best thing to do is hit up the Google and search for your computer model along with the word teardown beside it. Hopefully you can find a guide that'll show you how to disassemble this sucker. Several minutes and tiny screws later, there we have it. My very own standalone touchpad. It's so skinny, it's like a piece of cardstock. How can something like this detect touch? Glad you asked, because I made this to explain it. There are many different ways that a touchpad can work, but the most common ones operate using capacitive touch. Capacitive, that sounds like capacity or capacitor. Good deduction, Dr. House. Capacitors have the capacity to store energy. They're pretty simple in theory. You have two conductive materials that are separated by an insulated material, and this is a basic capacitor. So if you were to apply energy to the conductive materials, that energy is transferred into the capacitor so that when the energy source is removed, some of that energy remains stored away inside the capacitor. Hey, uh, Tinkernut, we want to know about track pads, not capacitors. Awkward. So with capacitors in mind, capacitive touch is basically detecting touch through a change in capacitance or energy stored in a conductive material. Okay, let's try this. On a simplistic level, touch pads have a conductive material and an insulating material. Now it just needs another conductive material to give it capacitance. Hmm, where could that other conductive material be? If you've ever been shocked by a doorknob after rubbing your feet across some carpet, then you're aware of your body's capacity to store an electrical charge. So acting as the other conductor, applying a touch of your finger to the insulated material creates capacitive energy. It's not much, but it's enough to be detected. Now for a touchpad, it basically has sensors on all four corners to detect a change in capacitive energy so that it can triangulate where your finger is. Ah, that is so cool. <laughs> Sorry, nerdgasm. All right, back to hacking the touchpad. Next is figuring out how we can connect it to another device so that we can control it. It'd be extremely too convenient if we could just use this little ribbon cable to plug into a different device, but it ain't that easy. Instead, we're gonna have to make our own connection. If you look closely on the back of the touchpad, you'll see some little solder points with numbers beside them. And to figure out what they each mean, we're gonna need to do some research. Back to Google, I searched for a schematic for my laptop online to see if I could figure out how the touchpad was wired. What it looks like is that this pin is 3.3 volts, this one is a data signal, this one is a clock signal, and this one is for ground. And then these don't look like they're connected to anything. So using a multimeter set to 200 ohms, I can touch one end to a pin on the connector and then another end to a solder point until the multimeter tells me that I have a connection. Then I'll mark it down and move on to the next one. So these are the corresponding solder points for our touchpad connection. So let's solder some wires to it. On the schematic it says that one pin is for data and one pin is for clock. Data and clock generally mean that this trackpad is using a PS2 connection. Yes, PS2 is the same protocol that mice and keyboard used to use before USB. 
So with that in mind, we can take our Arduino and follow this guide on connecting PS2 devices to see if we can start gathering data from the touchpad. Wiring things up and loading up the sample code provided, we can see the X and Y coordinates scrolling across the screen. And if we move our fingers around on the touchpad, we can see those coordinates change accordingly. Now what we need to do is turn it into something useful, like control something. What would you control with it? Let me know in the comments below. And stay tuned next week to see what I decided to do with it. If you have any ideas, you can submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. You can click here to watch more videos like this. And if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please feel free to donate at patreon.com slash tinkernut. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to youtube.com slash tinkernut.